Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm gonna hit you with a quick video talking about how I choose a frog. Uh, it's a very simple topic, but oftentimes when you go into a store, there's so many options that it's hard to pick on which one you think you should be throwing out there on the water. I keep my selection fairly simple, and I'm going to go over the couple things that I look at while I'm picking a frog. And if you're new to my channel, head down below and hit the subscribe button for me. I put new fishing videos out every Monday and Thursday, from tip videos just like this to fishing videos and tournament footage while I'm out there on the water. So if you don't want to miss any of that, hit that subscribe button down below. But for now, let's get into choosing a frog. So you can see I have a very, fairly simple selection right here but you can also tell that they're kind of categorized on what I have in this box here um, I'm gonna break it down really really simple for you you need four frogs that's all you're gonna need so the first thing I look at when I'm picking a frog is walking frogs ones with just a regular frog shape there and then popping frogs which have the popping face um, those are the only two that I carry I'm pretty sure those are the only two that are that are made but you do need both um, so for starters, you're going to want to use this walking frog anytime you're fishing in very, very heavy vegetation. Because of this tapered nose, it's going to come through a lot better, but it's not going to make as much noise. The other time that I like to use the uh, walking frog is actually when I want the bait to almost, I'll call it target fishing, where I'm picking out a log or picking out a hole in the grass or something like that, where I want to walk this bait in place and give a fish a chance to really come up and get this bait. When I go to the popping frog is when you're fishing in sparser vegetation or even open water sometimes around logs, bushes, and wood uh, when you want some uh, pop to it. So a lot of times if there's some wind, uh, not too much. If you have too much wind, a frog will not work. It just doesn't have enough sound to it. Um, but if you have a little chop on the water and you need something that's going to get those fish to find this bait, that's when I'll go to the popping frog. It really calls those fish's attention. Um, I do probably use the walking frog more than I do the popping frog, uh, but if you have a little a light chop or really want to get some attention of a fish and don't care about walking it in place as much, you can still walk these, but I have a tendency to keep these in place a lot better. Um, if you want that action, you can go to the popping frog as well, but you are going to need both. Um, so make sure you get some popping frogs, make sure you get some walking frogs. Now the second thing that you'll notice when I'm looking at my frogs here, this is the second thing that determines which frog I'm going to buy when I'm in a store, is the color. Now what you don't want to pay attention to is the color of the back. You can see these all have three different back colors, green, white, and black. But when you flip it over, you want to look at the belly color. So you can see these two are actually both white frogs now, and this one's a black frog. But if you like color on the back, you can often pick one as long as it has the right belly color as well. So I use this bright white and orange one oftentimes when I'm fishing far out in grass flats and I'm making really, really long casts. If you're fishing in a big grass flat, this green one's not going to show up as much for you to see. But this bright orange and white one will show up very well for you to see out there. The fish will only care about what's on the belly and you can keep track of where your frog actually is so you know when a fish bites it. Uh, that's the only time that I use these wild colors on the back, um, but it oftentimes helps if you want to include that in your selection while you're fishing. The fish are never going to see what's on the back of this. They're only going to see what's on the belly, so that's the only color you need to pay attention to. Uh, and these are the only two colors that I fish too. So I'll have white frogs and I'll have black frogs. So again, when I said that you only need four frogs, you need a white popping and a white walking frog and then a black popping and a black walking frog. Those are the only four frogs that you'll ever need. And when you want to use them, you want to use the white one on cloudy days, overcast conditions, and a cleaner water if you have it. Muddy water and overcast, you can still probably use the white frog, but that's when I'll start to go with the black frog. The black frog I'll use on sunny days and dirtier water conditions. This is gonna put off a, a much bigger shadow on those sunny days. It's gonna stand out against that blue sky, that light background, or in muddy water, it's gonna stand out a lot better. And then the white is gonna stand out a lot better in the cleaner water, as well as stand out against that br black or gray sky on a cloudy day. Uh, so that's when I'm gonna use these ones and that's when I'm gonna use the black one. That's the only two frogs that I carry, only two colors of frogs that I carry in my boat, and those are the only two that I'll ever throw. So I hope you enjoyed today's quick little video explaining how to pick frogs while you're out there. I know there's so many colors to pick from and options in the store, but if you keep it simple like this, you'll be catching a bunch of fish on a frog in no time. Just make sure you pick the right frog for the right conditions and keep it simple on your color selection. 
and you should catch more fish while you're out there. I hope you enjoyed today's video and leave a like down below if these tips helped you out and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up.